Hello and welcome to another episode of I'm Peaking Podcast. We have the insanely wonderful rave scientist here with us today, Grayson. Very talented man. Very, very talented. If you haven't learned, <laughs> listened to his music yet, listen to it. He's um, doing, doing something. Yo, this he candy has a light. <laughs> I got the same one from Nocturnal. Did yeah. you get it from Nocturnal? What kind of light is that? I can't even no, see it from No, I got here. it from Gold Rush. Sick. Oh. Gold Rush? Oh, no. We don't talk we about don't her. We don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're your hosts. I'm Devin. I'm Mickey. I'm Nan. I'm Brenda. And I'm not a host. But he makes you are insane today. You are today. house beats. Making house beats. House, not bass. I mean, maybe I'm making bass, but you guys don't even know about that. You got, oh. yeah. Is that a secret project? Is that what you're saying to us right now? I got so many secrets. <laughs> wow. Some of them are good and some of them not so good. But I'd say bass house is probably one of the good ones. So you make bass house and house. Well, I make bass house, okay. which I guess is house. Do you have yeah. a touch in like drum and bass? Maybe a little bit. Do I'm you like drum and bass? Yeah, I may have finished a liquid DMB song recently. Oh. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, you got me all excited right now. Look, the whole the whole thing about like the rave scientist stuff is like I was kind of irritated with the fact that all these artists have to pick a lane. Yeah. You know, I just like being that guy that walks around track gets to try all the flavors. You know, I want to know how to make hard oh. style. I it's like know Baskin how to Robbins up okay. in this Exactly. <laughs> call me the Baskin Robbins rave. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Grayson, 31 flavors. But, but you're like <laughs> you're the known <laughs> shuffler too. That's the that's the thing, is like you're the known shuffler of like a lot of the ravers. The known shuffler? Yeah. I mean, uh, there's a you lot of You should introduce bro. yourself for those who don't know who you are. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah give them your name too. Hey Look guys. into the camera. Hey guys. My like name seductively. Is hey guys. Maybe I'll try not to be too seductive. ASMR. Seductive. ASMR. <laughs> Welcome back to my. No, ASMR actually, that's podcast. hard. That's harder for me to edit. So <laughs> We're not preferably do not. That. Okay. <laughs> Loud ASMR. Hello, guys. Uh, my name is G Zoom. My real name is Grayson. You can call me whenever you want. You can call me Jerry. If you really wanted to, I might not Noted. respond to it. Okay, Jerry. Jerry? Like, no, no, Jerry. Uh, basically, I'm the dude that shows up to the raves and I fell in love with it. And now I just want everything to do with the culture. I'm obsessed with the music mm. and I'm obsessed with everything about it the feeling of community and everything around this thing. So oh, it's yeah. pretty much my entire identity at this point. We love that. Uh, yeah, this guy makes funny ass skits too. Original skits His that he edits scripts. are immaculate. <laughs> wow, I, yeah. I'm, I'm agree. Already True statement. Under, We're just gassing you so up. <laughs> I'm like, I'm starting to blush immediately. I'm just gonna uh -huh. sweat, sweat through the entire podcast. I also wanted to congratulate you too on all your uh, success lately with um, your like Instagram and uh, Thank with you, your dude. TikTok too. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just having, I'm just having fun goofing around, and I do it every day. And if you guys or anybody that watches it also likes it, then that's cool. Because I don't know if what I make is funny. It's hilarious. It's hilarious, It's funny. If you haven't already, mm -hmm. definitely go check his stuff out. I appreciate you guys. Yeah. Thank you so much. Y'all are wonderful. Oh, of course. <laughs> and I just want to bring attention to this. You have a show tomorrow. Mm. Or, or three weeks ago. Or when you guys see this actual episode, yeah, so, that's right. Three and I knew, yeah. and I know, you, and I know you weren't there. Okay, I'll remember that. It's fine though. You can go to the next one. You better come to yeah. the next one because I'm gonna remember you. I'm talking to you. Yeah, I'm looking at you. Okay. Oh my god, cool. What uh, what topics do we have today to talk about, guys? Well, you know, speaking of G Zoom being a house head. Mm. How do you feel about the whole contradictory thing, battle or whatever you call it, with uh, base heads versus house heads? You know, it's been it's been a thing. Like, what do you think about it? The base head house head beef is so funny. It's so funny, but you <laughs> so know, there funny. are people who like take it seriously, though, straight on seriously. Like they split themselves. They yeah, they themselves. like legit legit take it seriously okay so here's the thing that i gotta say about that like in general stop taking yourself so seriously <laughs> <laughs> like we literally especially by nature of like this kind of place that we're in like music is essentially playful like anytime something is not playful there's always like a point that you're trying to get to there's like a destination actually i think i'm stealing this knowledge from alan watts but like if you are trying to get somewhere that's like you can take it seriously. But music is quite literally playful because mm -hmm. it's just in the experience. You're not trying to get to the end of the music. Mm. You're there because the music is happening because mm -hmm. it's just mm. decorated time. Yeah. So in a sense, like for you to take something that that's that playful and take Crate it really seriously, war. it just man <laughs> manifest negativity is like messed up. Obviously, like we all like to tease each other. We all like to make fun. So like, you know, yeah, oh, bass house sucks or like or how sucks bass sucks. Like sometimes it's funny. 
Mm -hmm. but don't let that actually like control the way you think about things. yeah especially because yeah. like not. if you're new into the community as well you should be open to discovering new music exactly i yeah. always say that's the beauty of edm there's always something for everyone oh yeah oh yeah so. there's... i feel like the longer you're just like listening to edm music you start to get a taste for all of it yeah yeah, yeah it's a process it's there's like just... a steady process <laughs> there's just things that there's like so many doors to open like mm -hmm. you, if you show up into this community from the music or from the the appeal of the festivals the aesthetic yeah. or whatever you're here for like as soon as you get in if you like that initial taste like there's so many other things to experience mm -hmm. there's so much other cool stuff and yeah. like what's what's cool uh wonderly really you made a good point like yeah. your taste and what you find appealing about this culture is going to evolve right yeah. so yeah. one one year you might be a bass head and you might really like a certain bass artist but then the next year you're like oh no i like techno now yeah because yeah. when i started i loved bass house like mm. moxie was like my favorite <sighs> moxie and, switch it. and then i went to trap with the yellow claw dj snake and now i'm a bass head but now i'm a sad girl or whatever <laughs> um, so it just evolves as time goes by yeah you, sh you should enjoy the journey yeah honestly i'm i'm following personally i'm following a little bit to the dark side because uh hey. house music house music was my vibe but techno is just got Ooh, me techno these days oh okay. wait i actually have a question do you know uh jesus i saw that you follow him do you know aaron highbell aaron Hi yeah yeah the uh yeah he made the um that remix the humans remix yeah right? he made yeah. the humans remix and yeah. then he just came out with a uh, state of emergency mm. and uh shout out to highbell by the way um and uh i forgot i think the other one was i can't remember what the other one was called but um yeah funny story i actually um talk used to talk to him like couple years ago uh, uh, we almost got him we almost like signed him for a gig at when i was working at steezy okay uh for like this one series we had where we had like choreo um dancers choreograph a piece to no music and then we had a producer make a track that's cool to Ooh. the choreography that's that really is really cool. and so i found him um in college with uh, my friend my friend keith and um we found him when he was like really small he had like maybe uh. like 15 20k on soundcloud or something yeah. and like maybe like 2k on instagram mm -hmm. and like uh, tiktok didn't even exist back then mm -hmm. so um so yeah we've been following for him for a long time and it's really funny because he used to be a uh, really clean progressive house okay like really I've, sh I've showed you guys his music before yeah yeah i'm pretty sure yeah and so um it's so funny because those songs I still show people today, uh -huh. but I like listen. I actually took a chance to like listen to some of his new stuff last night, his techno mm -hmm. stuff. And I don't even like techno. And it's good. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. Um, Dom, Dom Bresky, uh played his uh, State of Emergency remix at uh, on last Friday. Or I mean, I don't how know. Do you, how were. do you know? You weren't even there. I saw uh, on High Bell's Instagram. <laughs> oh, just you like, weren't even there. I just saw he posted it. Okay. Yeah. That's it. I mean, t techno, techno is the wave i think um like it's cool and as i see it, i see the i see the eyes what's funny <laughs> what's funny what is, is the wave <laughs> what's funny is because like uh i don't know how much anybody knows about like genres and stuff like that but mm -hmm. back in 2016 era i guess like that feature base wave feature oh, base feature base future wave. Base, and, the, and the reason like that started oh, yeah, was yeah. flume and so now we're we're not in the techno wave right now what we're in is the tech house wave yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. so john summit it just blew that yeah. up and, oh, now, yeah. Yeah. and now there's true. a million people mm. making tech house like john summit what do you yeah. classify dr fresh g house g house g house, g -house. G -house. yeah it's like g house or bass house like uh, Wait no, what's what's all the these fun genres? House. What's the G, G stand for? GHP House. <laughs> uh, G G uh, is it Groove? Uh no, I think it's. I don't want to sound dumb, but I think it's Gangsta House. Gangsta Gangsta House. house? Someone, okay, Doctor Fry. I, I always just knew it was G House. I actually I never really thought of what the G stood for. Hmm. I but but my I'm like curious. when I hear G House, I just think like yo like G House. Like that, I'm a, I'm a G, G House. What if it's like G the drug? But it could it could G, be like not. Look, give <laughs> Why do you have to bring it up? <laughs> Fact check me real quick. There's so, oh, there's so like a, that sounds like a genre that should belong to is, you. Is it Gangsta House? G House? No. What is it? Oh, what is it? What is it? Is it Groove House? It's Ghetto House. Ghetto House. <laughs> Who made that? I knew yeah, it was who something. made that? That's not very politically it's correct. Not. I knew okay, it was okay, something. Okay, okay. Like they call it they call it Booty House. Booty I like Booty House. House. I like Booty House. Of course you like Booty House. Yeah. Why? Of course you like Booty House. I like Why do they call it that? I don't know. Um. I mean, Dr. Fresh's sets are really fun to like. It just, was like the distinct style at. from like the 90s. 
and it features like minimal 808 and 909 drum machine. Has a very mm. um. I mean, most Wait, most house that, music has nine. That says that it stands for gangsta house right there. Oh, it does. Yeah. You know what? So okay. It's the internet is just lying to me the, at this point. Wikipedia, everything on there is true. The many, energy was right. Many interpretations. Wait, fuck, I'm just oh, I'm yeah. just gonna call it booty house. Yeah, booty house. Booty house. Yeah, like G G house is. Uh, I guess that the energy was right. It was ghetto or gangsta, something like that. But it's it's mm. very it's a lot like. Uh, pluckier i'll say like pluckier so like pluckier? yeah th trying to describe it in like a super basic way like um so when, you, when you hear music when producer you, way when you hear a g, when you hear a g house drop is that how you dance like, to it when you the, the, the drop is gonna go ding, 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 ding. but if you hear like a bass house drop it's gonna go woo, 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 woo. Oh. It's gonna be yeah. like 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 staccato or like yeah. sluck here. Yeah. 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 You know what? Booty pluck. house. I think it's just booty, it booty house. house. I'm like, I'm hearing it in my head. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Because you booty could talk house. to it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's that, uh, um. Shout out to Tony though. By the way, he followed me on Instagram the other day. I love you, Tony. Oh. Wow. Wait, uh, Grayson, can you actually um give like some tech? Or tech house artists uh, recommendations Ooh. to people who might be interested. Tech house artists. We are not house heads, so you're yeah. the best at this right now. Honestly, the only reason I gave you those eyes earlier is one, I'm attracted to you, and two, <laughs> um, I went to Crossed, uh -huh. oh, yeah. and <sighs> he hated it. Well, I'm it's sure not that did. I hated it. The music was good at times, but it was just the same of the same of the same of the same. And like 45 minutes later, I'm gonna go take a nap on this bench. Yeah, I shouldn't be able to fall asleep at, yeah. a, at a festival. <laughs> no, for sure. Like, okay, traditional house music was based off of uh, break beats from like disco records. I'm pretty sure it's kind of yeah. same places like uh, same places uh, um, disco uh, yeah. or from mm. disco. It's the same place as hip hop. Sorry, mm. hip hop. And uh, like because of that fact, the beats were very like repetitive, mm -hmm. and it was just something mm -hmm. solid to yeah. dance to. And that was in the days of like vinyl. So like a lot of the older house producers a lot of the people that are playing at stuff like cross what they are they're like established house purists mm. where if you listen to a lot of newer house music you're actually not going to find a whole lot of artists doing that sort of stuff because in the uh. age of social media and the age of 2022 we're all really short attention spans oh yeah for that's sure. true oh 100 yeah. for sure Wait, then so this whole debate we're talking about with the house heads versus like bass heads mm -hmm. would you say these house purist artists take it to another level in the sense that they will only make house music and they shit on like bass music i mean the the i don't think like with in terms of like the actual house head versus bass head debate mm -hmm. nobody's actually right everybody just needs to chill out like, <laughs> it, like it's it's just it's just music right yeah. and yeah. you're allowed to like dubstep and not like house music yeah but a lot yeah. of people also debate that the crowd is what makes them choose the yes. side so yes. they hate on the house side because of how the crowd is when they're at a set or they hate on the dubstep side because mm. of how the crowd is yeah so so what what i i think that's really interesting because there there's definitely something to be said about that and there's also something to be said about like going to something like cross versus going to an insomniac event yeah the crowds are going to be different the culture is different there oh yeah so like what I'll give you I'll give you a a positive thing about house music and uh, the house music crowd and a negative thing right the negative thing might be that they're snobbier right yes. mm -hmm. that they they're they're like with some sort of expectation of the music mm -hmm. rather than just being there to have fun yeah however one of my favorite things about house music is that if you look around a festival no matter you could look for the toughest guy you could possibly see and no matter how tough you look, you cannot look tough dancing to house music. <laughs> <laughs> it's impossible. What if like you're big and juicy? But how are you dancing to house music? Uh <laughs> it's, it, it's bouncy. Hey, unless you're like doing some house step. I wish people I wish more people would actually learn like house step because I think personally I think house step is really cool. I mean, I have a dance background, so like I've I've been um exposed to a lot of like house dancers. Okay. And I used to like think it was kind of lame because it's all footwork. But mm -hmm. then I think when I started trying it, I just gained so, so much respect fun. for it. It's mm -hmm. so fun. It's yeah. it's really hard, but it's so much fun. Yeah. And there's so many cool things you can do with it. And so now I like all I want to, I mean, I don't dance as much nowadays, but like all I want to do like or learn when I do dance is like house stuff. What let's, is go, that? let's go shuffle. So is yeah, that like when, when you say it's house, so that'd be really cool <laughs> if like, we all had like a shuffling lesson at a festival. Yeah, like right. like literally like all so of you guys I'm don't peaking. know this guy's a great shuffler no but 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 oh. beyond just shuffling though like like i'm talking like actual house steps yeah so, like so you four say steps. house step so what four is, steps and like um like uh I, it's hard for me to describe i don't know all the mm -hmm. terms like uh you know what the jack is like the, the jack 
it's okay maybe. it's a it's a house it's a house move but uh-huh. it's really simple it's your feet are planted and you're like you're basically doing like <laughs> kind of a body so roll, like but actual not really. like technique yeah okay. no there's technique and everything there's there's um so there's uh the jack there's uh i don't remember all the names um i'll have to look at them up sometime but yeah, give me a list but there's yeah try. there's like actual house step you guys see me doing house step at at like at festivals all the time whenever there's like house music you do the same thing yeah <laughs> no i don't yeah not you when do. there's not like when there's movie. like no not when there's like faster like house beats By, when uh, there's the ha- jack machine i like i yeah, will but start like, doing, i remember like, what little... you do 80 percent of the time not 20 percent. it's of the my time. it's my one move where i like i do like the it's um a move my friend john you do a Hall kickball chain you do that it's kind of well <laughs> a kickball chain yeah i see you do the kickball chain because then i try to copy you you, yeah. you sure it's not a two-step that it, I'm could be the two-step well, it looks like a kickball chain to me these guys are I going to you, a festival this weekend so they're going to get a video of devin doing this move yeah, yeah. And they're, yeah. Gonna, they're gonna cut it into this i'm, podcast I'm not right that before. good i'm not that good at it just warning you guys but um don't put yeah. that in there <laughs> but just show the move. what do you uh, do you agree when house heads say now that like dubstep and duff and stuff they're not even edm anymore because we technically don't really dance to dubstep we just headbang that's dance that is yeah. Yeah. okay we're yeah. moving our bodies we're still moving our bodies <laughs> dancing yeah. dancing is self-expression through your body exactly yes. that's all it is yeah. so i never got that comment because i'm just like isn't it's just you're just moving your body or a bunch of house heads say that dubstep isn't music and yeah, then in my is. defense isn't music just a bunch of noises put together right like yeah. m- music is just organized sound over yeah a yeah time. pretty much yeah. No, Plus, there's true. different ways to headbang. You know, you could use a rail. You could, yeah. you could just be like doing this thing. You could do the, 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 the hand yeah. motion. And there's now like, has that one move where yeah, he yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'll there's, say to dance in a more like outward fashion or to be like bigger in your dancing, it's a lot easier with dubstep because yeah. dubstep, like, like even dubstep has a very like uh, yeah. stock kind of beat and like yeah. all the stuff in the middle of the beat is what's different. Um, and dubstep makes you feel like very, very powerful. In terms of like, why people like house music or why people like uh, bass music. You're picking your favorite genre based off of way, the way you like to feel mm-hmm. most. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Because right? each genre you go to feels a little bit different. That's what all of it is. Yeah. I like to call yeah. flavors of ice cream. Because yep. mm-hmm. it's all ice cream. flavors. <laughs> it's all ice cream. Just which one do you like the best? Do you yeah. like to yeah. go like this? Do you like to have a face like this? Mm, you feel that power? If you turned off the music at a dubstep show, right? But everybody could still hear it and they were dancing. The head banging and like the stomping, you know how you stomp from side to side, yeah. would look so funny and would feel <laughs> and would feel so weak. Yeah. Oh my yeah. goodness! Because you're just stomping yeah. into the ground, but yeah. all of a sudden, yeah. when there's that big kick and that yeah. snare that's like clanging, and then you're pushing into the ground at the same time, yep. that's what gives you that. Something just takes over you. Yeah. No- Nocturnal Wonderland. Nocturnal uh-huh. Wonderland. Uh-huh. When we were in the the silent disco, I had my headphones off the whole time, and I'm just watching everyone mm. just going. <laughs> have you guys seen hilarious. that meme? Have you guys seen that meme with this with the squeaker like the the squeaker? Yeah, like yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, silent disco. It's the Dude, classic. If you haven't been to a silent disco and taken your headphones off, do it at least Experience once. Experience it. It is the best it's hilarious thing to see. Just watch other people and in complete silence. It is the <laughs> funniest thing. Some people are even screaming, and the only ones screaming oh yeah the screaming stuff sometimes makes you feel uncomfortable because <laughs> it's just like these people don't have control over how excited they are no. yeah. i wonder who screams in the middle of public places who does that <laughs> for <laughs> videos who here, who here me that? <laughs> oh because i sing in the gym uh, yeah, yeah people series people now. comment oh, at was... joey swole i'm like what the bike like, <laughs> you know, who, funny you know who that is joey swole I've, I've heard of him yeah no he's basically a man in the fitness community who like People will tag him in videos, yeah, and then he would comment on the video, yeah. like if it's um if it's okay to do or oh, not. Oh, that yeah. guy, the overly like people do like, that on Larry's videos sometimes. He's no like way. a referee, yeah. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Exactly. Um, to go back to my earlier question though, Jizum, mm-hmm. did you have any uh, recommendations for um tech house tech house tech house hmm. tech house tech house? <laughs> Say um, an Australian. Accent. Yeah, it's like uh, Australian. tech house tech house. Tech house. Tech house. Tech house artists. Tech house. No, that's like Irish. <laughs> so like I'm I'm not a huge fan of tech house. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And the reason I'm not a huge fan of tech house is because of how overplayed it is right now. However, um, 
in terms of like, I, I'll give respect to the man John Summit because he's yeah. kind of the reason that like this he's whole, great branding. This whole, he did it very <clears throat> well. He's yeah. killing it right terrific, now. Terrific branding. Yeah. And it's like, even me as an artist myself, if I was like, I don't really have the jealousy issue anymore, but if I was trying to be jealous, I couldn't because he's just like a funny guy. Yeah. He's good at what he does. He, he's memeing yeah. on Twitter all the time. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like he's sparking anything too negative like some of the EDM Twitter guys. Yeah. But like, uh, but he's he's doing a great job. And so I'll give him the respect that he deserves. Uh, side piece is another side classic. Piece. Right? Side yep. piece is good in terms of tech house. I tend to move to a little bit of like the darker kind of future housey yeah. sort of mm. stuff, like mm. uh, Oliver Heldens or like Chami. Mm. Uh, Chami. Oh, I love Chami. I do right. like Oliver so Heldens. Good. Right. So, I love Chami. So I'm a big future fan. So like uh, like future bass, future. So like getting my feet wet in like bass house, future house. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like where I'm liking it for yeah. sure. Mm. Well, Martin Horger, Horger, I think I'm saying his name right. Mm -hmm. um, he's a phenomenal bass house producer. Like mm. I have the most respect for the people that can produce extremely well and not necessarily like DJ super well because mm. mm -hmm. there's there's a difference, right? Oh, yeah. absolutely. Somebody who's impeccable at the actual act of DJing but is for me a little underwhelming in terms of some of the productions is James, James Hyde. But Ooh. like his his production, ah. his, his DJing is, is next to insane like there's no way i could even approach yeah. being able to do some of the transitions that he's able to do the way he's able to build energy and stuff like that so mm -hmm. it's definitely different different ballparks of skills so yeah. i i tend to favor the people that make like super unique style music because they're definitely two extremely different skill sets yeah. oh yeah for yeah. sure like one helps the other for sure mm -hmm. but like two completely different skill sets I, yeah. I have not been djing for very long um i only st i wanted to make crazy music for a while found edm wanted to make crazy edm it's only recently that i've kind of realized you have to be a dj yep. mm -hmm. to do anything with that plus i mean i feel like that's a great way to be inspired it's a great way oh, to yeah. like figure out new ideas exactly. new thoughts like you're out there maybe mm -hmm. maybe you do a terrible terrible drop and you're like well i have an idea that could do something different. you know what i mean yeah. like that could that could help fuel and like cr uh, like fuel and like uh enhance your creativity for your own, own uh, music well what i realized recently was that there are no rules right <laughs> Absolutely. like i thought i when i was getting into djing at first i was like okay there's so many people like watching yeah. like the tech house guys like oh you gotta do a certain thing a certain way mm -hmm. and i was kind of nervous for all that but mm -hmm. uh what i realized it's all it's all just a show and you can do anything you want do yeah. you guys see at um do you still stay in key though Oh, I try. <laughs> yeah, you know? But I thought you said there's no rules. You know, when I started making music, I actually didn't know that there were keys to songs. I didn't even listen to music until I was 18 years old. Honestly? What? Same. Wait, yeah. hold so on. did you teach yourself or? It, yeah, I mean, well, to, to an extent. Then I hit a wall and then I got an apprenticeship at a studio. Okay. And yeah, so like I, I, when I made the choice, I learned from YouTube and I hit only hit a level. Wait, what do you mean you, you didn't listen to music until you were 18? Um, Okay, so I'll tell you, I guess, a short little story then. Uh, so when I was a kid, I grew up in small town Maine, like on the other side of the country. I do remember you. Uh, yeah, that. like small uh, woods, yeah. small town, like 4,000 people in my whole town. Sort oh of my thing. God. Uh, and growing up, I only heard like hard rock and like hard rap, which is what my friends were listening to. Mm. My sisters were really into Broadway musicals, so I listened to show tunes, I guess. <laughs> um, and my dad listened to like obscure African tribal rhythms. <laughs> Whoa. So, yeah. so, wow. so as a kid, this is what I was exposed to as music. And so I just thought I didn't like music because mm -hmm. it was something that you would put on in the car to scatter silence, yes. or mm -hmm. it was something you would go into the grocery store and Makes you, sense. Just, you would just be there. And yeah. it wasn't until um, I was uh, sitting on my friend's couch and Coco Butter Kisses by Chance the Rapper came on. Ooh. Oh, great song, by yeah, the way. And I was 18, and that was the first song that was really like, hmm, like that, that I'm supposed to like listen to this? Yeah. I'm supposed to be engaged with, with music? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so since then, from the point I was 18, I've just been completely obsessed with music. Yeah. Just How did you discover music. EDM, though? I moved to Germany. Ooh. Yeah. I lived there. I played ice hockey. That's how the tooth thing is a thing. You lived in Germany? Mm -hmm. Yeah, after high school. Damn. Yeah, and that's where I've, that's so sick. I, when I looked up like, I've heard EDM and I was like, how do they make this? There's no piano. Like, yeah. Well, there's some in some music, but like there's no there's no typical instruments of being played all the time. It's more oh. of like a digital thing. So I'm like, mm -hmm. how do they do this? And I looked it up and uh, Ableton came up. And Ableton yeah. came up because I was in Germany. It's a German company. It was the first one. Yeah. So I just got lucky that I got the best one. Wait a minute. So if you lived in, you lived in Germany. Yeah. How many years? Uh, just nine months. Nine months? Yeah. I was about to ask if you, did you go to any raves? European uh, raves? I went to clubs and it was awful. Oh, why? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Have you been to I'm, clubs I'm here? I'm not a club guy. Like, okay. it, it's just, I don't like, I don't like super, it's like kind of ironic because I'm a DJ, but like, 
um, intimacy of like being crammed in one the, room. I think the sweatiness and the <laughs> aggression is what I don't like. So it's like, similar to clubs out here. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. I don't go to many clubs out here. Mm. But I don't, I don't in uh, those European clubs, like, did they all just play like EDM, like house? Techno. Yes. To be honest, yeah, when, they probably when, didn't have like hip hop clubs. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> when I discovered the whole fact of EDM and that I wanted to like make music, mm -hmm. I started making EDM, but I realized like EDM in general, and that's like the super umbrella term that people keep making fun of me for using because not everything's EDM, or whatever. But mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, the, I forgot what I was saying. If I go to a yeah, I, I liked EDM and that's what like piqued my interest mm -hmm. in in that kind of learning how to produce music and stuff like that. But then yeah. as I started to make it, I realized how hard it was. Yeah. And so I decided, okay, maybe I should just make music and not worry so much about like what I'm making. Mm -hmm. Because if if anybody's looking to make music and you start making stuff and you realize you don't sound like your favorite producers, guess what? You're not gonna sound like your favorite producers for years. For oh, years. <laughs> so like just just make stuff that you are interested in. Mm -hmm. I went in a, on a whole horseshoe Ooh. round of like lo-fi R and B. Like I made albums of just random stuff. Dude, Grace. a little oh go ahead. A little thought that uh for all the artists out there, because I, I know exactly what he's talking about, the threshold. So basically imagine like your interest in music, it's gonna go up really, really fast. And then you try to learn music, the threshold to skill set is not the same. Like your skills growing as a musician, as an artist, it's going to go significantly slower than your interest in all these big, yeah. beautiful, amazing music artists. Unless so just you're a trust. Prodigy. Well, yeah, unless you're a prodigy, <laughs> but yeah. trust, trust that have, the like, threshold is different, you know? Like, yeah. It takes time. Or unless you have like extensive musical background, you know, like a lot of these big DJs, like I'm going to use Zed as an example because he's my favorite, but he has like a really extensive classical background mm -hmm. in like piano and he learned like the drums and he learned like a bunch of other instruments before he started producing oh, yeah. EDM. And you can tell when he like in his songs, like that's why everything is so calculated, I feel like. Everyone always thinks they're like overnight successes. It's like, no, they went to school like or that. they've been doing this for years. Yeah. Like there's yeah. no, there's no overnight success. It yeah. certainly helps a lot. Like if you, if you are made, what's so cool about music, one of the things I find so cool about music is that it's just inherently human. Mm -hmm. And I'm a prime example of that because I didn't have any classical <clears throat> training. Yeah. I didn't listen yeah. to music. Mm -hmm. I didn't do any of this stuff, but mm -hmm. like just by nature of me being a human being, I can feel rhythm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I can choose which sounds sound good versus yeah. which ones sound bad. It's yeah. just a really long it, like trial and error sort of thing. yeah it's like okay does this that's, sound good that's, no, this that's good. where the rules quote unquote right. come in it's yeah. like it's not that there's no uh, that, that there are rules it's just like it's very commonly known that this sound next to this sound sounds bad well so yeah. it, well, so the, the rules in, in terms of like the scale and stuff but the the thing that i had about rules and this was kind of like earlier on in my production journey was uh you need to learn the rules before you can learn how to break them. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's like that for anything. Yeah. Oh yeah, honest, yeah. Like yeah. the basic musicality, yeah, needs to be known just so that yeah. you can like know yeah. how to play with the rules. Know how to push mm -hmm. the boundaries. Like yeah. the, the the pieces of advice I would give, I guess, if you're like trying to make music at all, is like be patient with yourself because that's gonna take forever. Um, <laughs> yeah. Finish finish your music. So like, don't start one song, realize you don't sound like Porter Robinson and then, and then yes, put that yeah. down. It's, I, have, I have a couple of tracks that I've made and no one has heard them except for maybe these two. I have thousands of unfinished songs that I will never finish, mm -hmm. yeah. but I always make sure that I'm finishing them so that I can yeah. just get better. Yeah. Cause that's the, yeah. that's the idea is to just, is to just get better as you finish more oh. and more. And more. There's, that's actually like a really good lesson that I, I, I remember learning was like this uh, one teacher I had, he was like, think about it like a six year old with a guitar. Mm -hmm. They're going to play. It's going to be terrible. But then they'll keep practicing and practicing and practicing. And the one thing about being a pro music producer is you save your file and then you can hear it again. Nah, that's 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 what gets in your head. You're like, I don't sound great already. But like a six year old with a guitar, they don't even remember what they just learned 10 seconds ago. So yeah. then you automatically keep practicing and practicing and practicing. And it's the same way with. What you're saying is just like you got to keep making songs, finishing tracks so that the practice, the experience is in there so you can move on to the next, the next, and the next, and the next. I also think that a lot of people like come back to tracks. Like I, I know, like uh, I think it was Keenan who uh, I, he just finished a track recently that took him like what, two years? Oh, he yeah. said he started it two years ago and he ju finally finished it. Mm -hmm. um, so like, yeah, it's, it's, it's a process because sometimes you learn stuff later that mm -hmm. you didn't know. Or you uh, meet someone. Or something was missing like and you couldn't figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, shapes took me two years to make. Sheesh. So, yeah. 
Yeah, that happens sometimes. You'll yeah. just start something and then you, it'll... Be patient. Yeah. I just want to add in, just quick thought. I was the same. I didn't actually listen to music until like I was like eight. I mean, okay, I listened like 16, 17 years old, like mm. Bleak 182, Simple Plan, Punk Rock era. Okay. And eventually, but I didn't appreciate music right. yet. It, it was just like there. Life. Yeah. 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 Okay. I once I downloaded, I didn't download. I was at, I was on Broadway. It's the last point I'll make about that. I was on Broadway and my uh, sisters were going to see a play called Chicago. And I was like, I don't want to go see that show. <laughs> so I went to go see Shrek the music. <laughs> And a I, valid choice. <laughs> yeah. and valid was, choice. It was really good, by the way. Huh. But I got, uh, I got the CD for Shrek the Musical. And when I got home, I, like just because I had, there was the only CD I had. I was like, oh, let me put it on my iTunes. Uh, and my friends found it, and they made fun of me relentlessly <laughs> for it. So Shrek the Musical was one of the reasons why I was embarrassed. Go check out Shrek the Musical. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. On Shrek, Shrek the, the Musical plug. There you go. <laughs> I mean, musicals happen. are great, generally speaking. Yeah, for sure. I know we're talking about music right now, but switching gears a little bit. Did you guys see what Pascal posted on his Instagram? Daddy Pascal. The, yeah. Pascal. The icon. Narcane. Yeah. yeah, the Narcane and how um, he yes. brought um, acknowledgement to like what has been happening with the fentanyl and then the overdose. Yeah. And now we're able to bring in test strips. Much, yeah. much mm -hmm. needed. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good job, Insomniac. Hell yeah. They're yeah. working with overdose. Mm -hmm. And yeah. overdose. And overdose. Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Um. Yeah, no, that's this is one of those things where I'm just like really happy about because, well, safety, you know, yeah. like, yeah, no, this is a really big step in like the right direction, I think, for, you know, the Raven EDM community. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah. yeah, it is. It is a problem. Do, do you guys know much about Narcane? I actually don't No. I just know it's a, yeah, it's supposed <laughs> to like. Correct me if I'm wrong to my understanding, if you're ODing on um, specifically like an opioid like fentanyl. Narcan can stop the effects of that overdose. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think it reverses it. Actually. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. But again, <laughs> please do your research. I'm not yeah. an expert. I don't know. Yeah, I, haven't, your, yeah. I haven't also, done my full research yet. Yeah. Also, End Overdose has videos of how to use Narcan yes. and, yeah. and yeah. how to see, like, how to spot there you go. when how someone you is yeah. overdosing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And the good thing about those, those sprays, too is uh, I think what they call narc narxalone or something. I think nar so. Nar yeah. yeah. Um, is uh, even if you are not sure if someone is ODing on um, an opioid or like fentanyl, for example, um, you can still spray it in the person's nose, uh, even if they're ODing on something else. Uh, and if it's not an opioid, then they'll still be just fine. Yeah. Okay. So, Again, please do yeah. your research to all my rave dads, rave moms who are taking their friends, anybody yeah. who's actually going to do a pro workout. Yeah, 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 like anyone who wants to or even thinks about or even goes to festivals, anything about pre-workout, do your research, do your research, do your research. Yeah. Invest in test strips, um, fentanyl test strips. Um, yeah. Be safe. Really, guys. For sure. Yeah, and honestly, yeah. like someone commented this on uh, our video about how like me talking about the dangers of, of uh, I don't know why I quoted, like it's a legitimate <laughs> thing. That you're, do that. you're quoting them. Yeah, I'm quoting yeah. them, yeah. Like they, yeah. they were like, oh yeah, now I'm too, Nan scared me from ever wanting to do pre-workout ever again. And honestly, good, good. If it good. scares you, then, because the thing is like, I'm not going to pretend that this, the, the, the act of pre-workout is safe. I'm not going to pretend that. Yeah. It, can, it can be dangerous. Yeah. So you have to know that going in. Yeah. I'm not going to stop you from taking risks. That's up to you. I take that risk. Other people take that risk. Mm -hmm. That's up to us and up to the indiv individual. So again, do your research so you know what's going to happen inside your brain, your body, all that jazz. Yeah. So that you can be better prepared for um, any effects, whether they're, you know, good effects or uh, negative effects to your yeah. body. And on the flip side of that, I also wanted to comment this because I got a comment today as well uh, on a video I, I just posted today, actually, um, about glorifying drug use and how uh, a lot of creators um, are blamed and responsible seen as responsible for other a lot of actions. yeah for other people's actions and i'm here to say that um i am not going to sit here and pretend like those things don't exist and are ingrained in the raven edm culture uh and i'm using that as a quote by the way because uh, i know a lot of other people have quoted that especially when we've talked about raving sober so um these things do exist um and i think everyone should be completely aware of uh, what they're doing before they do it. You should do extensive research, as we just mentioned. Um, we also have links to um, trusted sources, uh, which you can see in the description. You can also see it on like each of our individual profiles, like in our link trees and stuff. Um, so yeah, guys, do your research. Um, and like 
I'm not going to say like, don't blame us for stuff. I'm all, I only make videos based on my experience just as everyone else here does. Um, but for anyone to base what they should be doing and their entire life off of 30 sec, you know, 30, 60 second videos is I, it's silly guys. Yeah. So, can, I, can I say something about that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Please, yeah. Please, please. So like this whole, this whole crazy taboo thing that's surrounding that aspect of our culture is doing way more harm than good. Yeah. So like one of the draws that I have to being at raves and being at festivals is the fact that we all get to be kids. There's an example of a girl coming up to me at EDC with a marionette puppet and I got to dance with a marionette puppet for, for, for a few <laughs> seconds. So, right? so, so cool. we all get to be, we all get to be kids, yeah. but, but at the same time, like outside of that rave, outside of the festival, like we're all adults and we can think for ourselves. And mm -hmm. we, we know that because of how difficult it is to go to these festivals, right? Yeah. yeah. Like we have to make sure that we're getting all the stuff organized. There's a lot of work that goes into it. So like, let's just act like adults when it comes to a conversation about this sort of thing. Like, just be open to talk about it. Don't yeah. base your opinion off of a 30 second meme video that you saw on That's... Instagram. Like, if you really had some kind of concern, maybe reach out and express that concern. But at the same time, like these, the content that we do, like Devin was saying, it's like a diary, it's like a journal. Yeah. It's yeah. like mm -hmm. what we see, we just make a funny, yep situation yeah. about yeah. it but be open to having these conversations because that's how you yeah. keep people safe and like that's the most important thing mm -hmm. exactly. it's not just that there's culture there's music there's a lot more in here mm -hmm. yeah. you know but and just I mean, don't don't close off yeah, yeah. and then yeah. honestly let's be honest here like we're honestly let's be honest here what's wrong with me today? <laughs> <laughs> you sound like me <laughs> let's let's, yeah. let's be honest here like we're open to discussion we're like we're literally having uh, we're doing this podcast so that we're open to discussion about yeah. music, about the pre-workout, about the culture, about raves, yeah. about the people, all of this, because I mean, we're all part of it. And it's a, it's a big part of like a lot of people's lives and whatnot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we, we understand that, you know, th this is, you know, diving into like heavier stuff that, you know, could potentially affect your life. So like, we want to also make sure that everyone is as educated as possible when it comes to stuff like this. I, I was fortunate enough to have someone educate me uh, when I first started getting into um, pre-workout use but mm -hmm. um you know not everyone might have that so and especially now with the internet you know like I, I understand the concern that people might get a little um they might get a little like flustered because they see things that maybe people or other people who aren't aware are going to see and then think oh that's what i should do yeah um but that's why i think the message of everyone just needs to do their research mm -hmm. and not take the internet so literally <laughs> um that's what that's or, what everyone should be. Or yeah, in I, the in the words of uh, uh, Grayson here, uh, everyone just needs to chill out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. for yeah. real. Y'all need to chill out, and y'all need to make your own decisions. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah the goal don't base your yeah, don't We're not base your decisions anything. on us. Like yeah. it's it's yeah. it's critical thinking is part of it. Like the the brave stuff and like the festival stuff. It's all kind of uh, fun. It's like yeah. clowny, but at the same time, like the one thing that's not a joke is is your safety. Yeah. Right. And so like that's just something that you should take seriously for yourself. Like yeah. make mm -hmm. don't give somebody else the responsibility of your safety. Make sure you're good. Like yes. yeah. make Absolutely. That, and you'll Put also that be, on a freaking shirt and sell it. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll, be, you'll be a lot better to be around too, because if you know that you're responsible and you got your stuff figured out, then other people are gonna be want to be around you. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, because you're not being a liability to everybody else. And it's what I've been saying since day one. Work hard, play harder, but play safe. Mm -hmm. do your safe. research man yeah also it's just more fun like do you guys not know how to have fun like you over <laughs> if you overdo it that's no fun yeah. <laughs> yeah dude like i thought the whole point was to have fun if you guys are just doing it to like ah, uh, then it's that it yeah. kind of ruins and don't become thing. dependent on it to have fun too no you want to enjoy yeah. and have an experience yeah. while you are there there's a happy medium mm -hmm. exactly yeah, yeah. Like, or if illegal substances do scare you we have you know legal options natural substances, natural substances. Natural. Uh, this is party caps um, wait what, what is that party caps this is a natural mdma substance yeah basically the main component is kana extract um it's traditionally used it's i think in south africa yeah um of a succulent plant and it naturally induces uh, mood energy and helps with focus so like it's an actual pre-workout pill supplement in a sense um, <laughs> yeah but that's, that's like, what it feels like, like. and yeah. that is confirmed through a cop <laughs> yeah way. yeah a cop through was a cop. looking at this shout out to jesse's neighbor uh, <laughs> i forgot his name <laughs> <laughs> mandy remember his name yeah I don't oh, shoot it I... also has a lot of other uh, vitamins vitamin b6 vitamin b12 uh, which yeah. a lot of people do take b12 to help induce a role so i could imagine yeah. b12 in this could yeah. help induce There's the energy 
So what you're saying is that Mother Earth and the rave gods did a collab? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, I like that. <laughs> we have all tried this, by the way. Yeah. It yeah. does work. Like, I can't confirm. Podcast episode just, one and two. It just feels like a... Yeah, we, we took actually it. took this before. Yeah, yeah. and it, it helped us like, we were get so in the swing. so tired. We were tired and we yeah. also didn't have like um, a structure yet. So we yeah. were getting into the swing of like speaking on yeah. the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. And now that we have the structure, like we don't necessarily need it. However, need it, it does help. Hey guys, future editor Devin here. I uh, just wanted to give a quick note that if you guys do decide to purchase some party caps after seeing this, which I do highly recommend, by the way, um, take them with food because they are very vitamin heavy. So if you take them on an empty stomach, you will probably feel sick or nauseous uh, and no one wants that. So take them with food if you do decide to try them out. And uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, back to the video. Yeah, um, it's like a boost of energy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and there are a lot of other options for stuff like this too. It's not it's not just party caps. But, yeah, you know, there's a lot of other 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 stuff. Um, I can't think of any at the top of my head right but, now, but I know there is. This yeah. is just the one we've tried, and <laughs> yeah, I, I got to tell you, I definitely felt the euphoria, confidence, energy, and mood boost. <laughs> <He's never laughs> yeah. off the package. Like, literally, <laughs> like I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm reading it off the package because I'm like that ep- like that the episode that we we took this for. Uh, episode two because we just wanted to try it yeah, yeah. dude it yeah. was it was it was great well, we tried it yeah. before that too didn't we, we? we took it at the uh, yeah. hot summer yeah yeah hot yeah. summer yeah and i remember like walking in i'm like huh. you guys did i don't think i took it yeah, I, felt, I don't think uh, you did yeah i think uh, Brynn and i did yeah, yeah. we both did yeah. and it's because i was trying to like not drink that's yet. when we confirmed from the cop that it was is legal because so. i was i was <laughs> honestly i was so like um skeptical about it i was like i don't really want to skeptical yes i'm sorry Wait, man. ask her to pronounce massachusetts massachusetts oh you, oh you got close i'm getting better <laughs> she can't she can't pronounce my problem is because i wore braces for a long time and i didn't wear my retainer so now i have an overbite and it really it hurts oh. uh, me whenever i try to pronounce things so i gotta get invisalign but that is why i can pronounce things sometimes got it yeah that's Sorry. why well, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, so if a cop approves, I mean, yeah, shout out to Party Caps. Thank you so much for uh, sending us these yeah. and um, sponsoring our podcast. Yeah, we'll have the link. Yeah, links. we'll have a link. We'll have a link. Do we links have, below. Do we have a code? I don't think. Do we have a code? Um, I will get a code. I, f- I will get a code. It'll we'll be, put it, in the description. It'll be yeah. I'm peaking. If, yeah. Yeah. Anything. if yeah. there is a code, it'll be in the description. It'll be I'm peaking. And it'll be I'm peaking. Yeah. Promo code bro. Hello. Hi. Welcome in. We got more guests. Sorry, we're <laughs> we're currently on air. Welcome in. <laughs> Dude, it, is is the sign? Oh, okay. Is the sign flipped? <laughs> it is. Okay. Guys, we really need a, our own studio. <laughs> There's always something happening, you know. <laughs> Work in progress. Oh no, I, I saw I saw a comment I on think YouTube. I know which yeah, yeah. I saw about. a comment on YouTube. Was like, I always expect something happening at the end that just like because you know the last episode, or the camera died. Yeah, and, and they were like, like, and I love it. And I love <laughs> it, dude. Like, like people are always expecting to see something happen at the end because there's always something that happens. <laughs> I swear we are not. We, we don't script not, this we are, shit. We're not scripting it. Yeah. Like like you heard the door open. It's we literally had problems. Face? We had problems with our audio recorder before this because the freaking cable, uh, the the cable input, the is, input, is yeah, weird. the input, like, and so now we have to like return it and get a new one. Like, there's always something going on. We're trying uh, here, we just, but yeah. everything for you guys. Yeah. Honestly, though, so, honestly, you like, guys, we're, we're doing like, the most. <laughs> we're 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 putting in the effort because we love doing this, and it's like yeah. it's like you know, it's kind and, of a safe space. for Honestly, us too, too, it's like mm-hmm. adversity. Yeah. Like, bring it on, bring on the next thing i have to deal with and fix because i accept that we're gonna have to fix something else something's gonna break oh also the light the light oh yeah yeah. motion light so we're we're heating during halloween this is the most meta podcast ever it's It's a podcast about podcasting yeah literally podception is this what you pay to see welcome I'm peaking podcasts on all oh, your yeah. favorite cable shows. There we go. <laughs> C- cable shows. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? I can't. Now I can't. I just ruined the thing. I can't even hear myself now. Great. Oh, there's a, there's another See, thing. See, look at There's always something. Can uh, I'm gonna see what I can do. <laughs> oh, that worked. Yeah. Do I have to no, hold it? it? Down, no, put it down put slowly. It down. Imagine the whole yeah, episode. Just, you're just gently, holding it. Gently. <laughs> gently. 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 Yep. Yes. Yes. <laughs> now say wow. good girl. <laughs> Good, Good girl. girl. <laughs> Whoa. Why'd you do it with the morning? Like, I'm sorry. Why'd you do it with like, the morning wake up voice? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got like crazy. That a morning wake up voice? That's a not the morning wake up voice. I would Daddy, want. it's not the time. Oh. <laughs> this this podcast will be I told on paper. Okay, no, it's it's only <laughs> it's only under the table. No, I'm not. <laughs> 
<laughs> goes under the goes table. Under table. Says, <laughs> Daddy. See, everybody thinks we're in a throuple, but when that happens, I'm just like, maybe I should leave. I'm gonna be honest. What? You like, are my daddy too. What you mean? When I, what I told, I've told Devin this when I started making content. You three were the example, and I thought you all were in a throuple too. <laughs> Yeah. You know, that's what well, I thought. Well, now we're in a couple. Of- yeah. <laughs> a couple. God What's it. a couple? God. I, I just made that word up right yeah. now, but it's for quite a quintuple. More quintuple. That. I thought that was five. That's five. One, two, three, yeah, four, quadruple. five. Yeah, quadruple. Quadruple. Is it quadruple? Qu- yes, yeah, quad. Quadruple. Can we just say quad. we're a square? Quad is four. No, that sounds lame. Square? Yeah. Yeah. yeah ever know, you ever heard the Thruple? term? I just, the term, I just work uh, here. You want to join? Be square? I just work here. You want to join? I just work here. Why don't you want to join? I just work here. I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> As you should be. <laughs> we'll, we'll take care of you. <laughs> yeah. That's even yeah, scarier. That's take great care of you. <laughs> just If anybody's out there, make I'm sure being held here against my will. Make sure your holes are just um, nice and he, his His legs are cuffed to the table right now. Yeah. <laughs> can't I, leave. He can't leave. They think we're joking. That's what's funny. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> The fear in his eyes. The fear in his eyes. What are some of the other topics that we had, by the way? Did we have? We had some more, right? Yeah. I wanted. I wanted to talk about um, EDC Orlando. Oh, oh yeah. You guys are going. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Oh yeah. So we forgot to mention. By the time this recording comes out, um, so Escape hasn't even happened for us yet. We were shooting this before Escape. Um, but yeah. So by the time this airs, we will. It will be getting ready for EDC. EDC is expensive. So we have EDC mm. Orlando coming up, and that's going to be uh, what next week. So. That being said, how do we prepare for traveling for raves? Because y'all gotta uh, fly. Yes. We gotta fly. You guys gotta fly. Great I would question. say get your flights early. Don't early. wait for the last minute. Because yeah. my homies had to cancel coming to Edis Orlando because oh. flights went from four hundred, which they thought were gonna go down, but they ended up skyrocketing to a thousand dollars for a round trip. Wow, that's hella yeah. money wow. that you don't want to be spending no, for. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Yeah, and and if you're gonna walk, like better start now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, you go. I was gonna talk about Ubers as well. Um, <laughs> Uber. Ubers are gonna be expensive. I know surge charges for EDC Las Vegas. Like we all uh-huh. know, they're like two hundred bucks. But yeah. from my understanding, from my friend who went to EDC Orlando, um, Ubers were between two to six hundred or two to five hundred dollars one way. And How's that, it even legal to charge that much? Right? Like, and she even said that one point from the airport, going from the airport to her Airbnb was around $200. And she was sitting the? there for an hour. It's like they want us to like drink and drive. Not no, <laughs> oh, Don't drink and drive. But I'm saying it's like, why? I don't understand. Uber was made to like make it easier and uh, make a cheap option for people to be able to do that safely. Are there going to be shuttles? Play, I, hate, I hate to play devil's advocate, but it's just like they yeah, have to be in traffic yeah, for hours yeah. and that's hours. True, that's true. That's they gotta true. They got to go to the airport. Yeah, like true. if you yeah. had to go to the airport all the time, you'd want to get paid a good. That's still that's, that's overly shuttle. priced. No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's definitely overly priced. Yeah. But yeah. like it's. Yeah. Isn't there like a hotel na- uh, called Home Base where you could just take a shuttle from that hotel to the venue i don't know about home base but we're staying at one um called yeah. mm. I, don't, I don't know what it's called i can't remember what it's called right now but yeah we're currently um going to be staying there and yeah. they have a shuttle experience yeah nice yeah so i'm sure you guys can find a lot of them also i wanted to make a comment too on the flights um a little tip for if you didn't know um is when you are booking your flight uh, make sure you buy your flight when you go in there the first time because when you leave and come back um there's something about what the ip address oh yeah 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 every it time jack you google, up your yeah. airplane ticket price yeah um and it, it knows your ip address so mm-hmm. make sure when you go in you've researched the flights beforehand or you go in uh maybe you, you can go in on an anonymous browser yeah and do that vpn vpn yeah. you could do a vpn every time you google it, VPN, it will go please up. sponsor us some some vpn <laughs> and, <laughs> and also also i i highly recommend if you're gonna uh don't don't go to google you go through the website itself, like say Southwest, for example, or Delta or whatever, like go straight to the airline website itself. (laughs) Yes. This is actually really good advice because I have to buy a plane ticket for Cancun next year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do not go through Google now. No. (laughs) That's not next year. That's this year. (laughs) But there is one next year. There There is. Every year, man. Honestly, I've graduated. I can go next year. Or this year. It's final. Or we could go this year. If Holy shipwrecked will hit us up. It's in it. <laughs> you guys hit them up. Me, Honestly, G-Zoom, we- and Rave Dad. 
pretty sh- pretty sure that like if, <laughs> if we were all there and we convinced all of them to go I'm just, yeah we shoot a podcast episode there even maybe. whoa how would we take this I'm just how would we do oh, that dude, that I'm wouldn't just, even be difficult I'm we just, have all oh, the, we have the bags. We have all our equipment. I think it's a bomb. I'm just saying, under the influence and suburb <laughs> talks, went to, they just went to Vegas this last week and they shot podcast episodes in Vegas. It's possible. That's fun. So we should do that. Just say. Did really you fun. just did you just give them a shout out? Yeah. <laughs> shout out Wu Talk. Hey, That's I, love, I love, love Wu Talk. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah. Uh, do we have any other tips though for uh, other travel oh, stuff? Hotels, uh, just for maybe? like hotels traveling for God. Hangers. Hangers. It's a weird Hangers. One. It's a weird one. <laughs> yeah. It's slept, it's oh, yeah. Slept book on. to your hotels like yeah, when you have months hotels, like, in advance. Because you want to feel comfortable in your uh your, yeah. your EDC hotel. Oh, you meant like clothes hangers. Yeah, clothes hangers. Oh, what did you think? So, like, hotel airline hangers. Did you think like, airline, airline hangers? hangers? But hotels already have hangers in the closet. They have yeah, like mind you four or five. Utilize. I know a lot yeah. of people just live out of their suitcase, dude. What's wrong with that? It's so, like it's I cannot. Literally me. I cannot explain how comfortable it is to like unpack and everything. It's so much work. Yes. Yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> but it just it makes. It, in personally speaking, like it, it's made the festival experience like a lot more enjoyable because then it's just like <laughs> it's I don't feel like angers. I don't feel like I'm like a mess the entire time. I feel like I'm waking up. I'm I'm taking care of myself. I'm gonna go to this festival. Take care of myself with pre workout. And it's just gonna be a good time. Not when our suite looks like how it did for this last EDC. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> how many people did we have packed in one room? Yeah, what was Sate slept on the ground on the, on the cushions? He actually said it was really comfortable. But th- I love that like all our stuff, like when we got there, like we were like a little organized, and then literally by like the next morning, our stuff was just everywhere. And I mean, granted, we had how many people? 10, 10 11? One, at two, least. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> She's like counting. Yeah. <laughs> I think we had like 11 or 12 people in one like tiny suite that had two beds and uh, they had, uh, we had an air mattress. 11. Not nine. 11. Well, the, the ideas that you're like projecting are the reason why you're the rave dad. You know what I mean? Like the, the, pushing responsibility and stuff like that. But this whole going to raise experience, especially if you're going from the West Coast to Orlando mm-hmm. sort of thing, like it's so chaotic. Yeah. One one thing I love to say is embrace the chaos because whenever, oh, yeah. whenever it happens to rave day, you're going to realize that the ride that you had isn't going to be an option or your flight's going to get delayed yeah. or something. You're going to realize you're going to get to the hotel and they're not going to be able to check you in yep. or somebody forgot their ID back. Th- like there are a million things that could go wrong. Yeah. And if you just have the attitude of like, eh, it's rave day. Yep. Yeah. Like, or, that's true. That's, a, that's great. I like or, that. yeah. or there could be uh, a wind issue and they have to cancel the entire festival. Oh, mm. wind yeah. we were young. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, literally. Damn. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> So did, if you guys did you come up with that or did no. you say that? <laughs> so if you guys don't know about uh, uh, when we were young, um, it is a punk rock festival that was in Vegas. And day one, I don't, I, I'm pretty sure they it went on for day two. 60 mi- yeah, but day one, 60 miles per hour winds canceled the whole festival for the day. Mm-hmm. People who flew out there from I heard there's people who flew out from from uh, Europe. Yes, wow. Yeah. And th- what are they gonna do? Come back next weekend when they do uh, yeah. weekend two? Yeah. Are they gonna go to day two, day three, whatever? They yeah. came for one day. They can't. Yeah, I heard it was pretty. I heard even the days that, that they did still have it too. Is it was pretty disappointing. How was it disappointing? Uh, I don't know because uh, I was going off of Ace's video. Uh, shout out to Ace. Uh, but, Ace Antonio. Yeah, the real yeah. Ace Antonio. Yeah. Uh, I was watching his like part one and he was saying how he was like disappointed, but uh, he's turning into a four part series. Mm. But um, obviously, you know, you have the first day where they cancel last minute, yeah. which is pretty <laughs> shitty no matter how you look at it. Like you shouldn't never have to cancel like that or like, I don't know. I mean, I know it's out of their control. Yeah, it so really was. No, like, apparently, so the company... The only reason why they shut it down so late is because they tried their best to keep it, but the oh. city shut them down. They're just like, no. Damn. Oh, so it was the city? It was a city. They're like, no. To be fair, that happened at uh, EDC a couple of times. They didn't shut down the whole festival. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's big enough. It's wide enough. But oh, at yeah. least, yeah. yeah, yeah, the stage. Yeah, that happened. Uh, yeah, this year. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, this last year. Yeah, yeah. And then as soon I, as the wind slowed down, yeah. they're like, all right, we can open this I back remember up. I was on my way to Seven Lions and they're like, nope, nope, they're closing yeah. main stage. And I was like, I remember that too. Yep. Yeah, Gold Rush shut it down too. We I were will, in a barn. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I, don't, I remember looking it fun. up, why it's so dangerous. <laughs> uh, I mean, if you think about the artwork and everything they have up there, dude, that falls. It that falls. artist is dead. Yeah. 
and yeah. that's happened that's, that's actually true. happened in history like there yeah. have been artists Wait, really? who are on a stage yes who? where it i don't remember i don't remember off the top of my head right now oh. i just remember looking it up because i was thinking like is this real like could this actually happen I've seen video a video oh yeah yeah it'll crush them yeah easily wow. look mother nature is boss okay so <laughs> can't certain, control her bro sort yeah. of thing it's sad no but there are like a bunch of people in comments saying like i can't believe they did this and then other people are like yo they can't control the weather like yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it's how I, you want to take it and i personally like i've been to a few festivals yeah. where it's been rainy or windy it's not that fun sometimes yeah. if, if it's really oh. if it's really bad it's really not that fun yeah. just speaking, remember it's for your safety yeah speaking of uh, uh weather taking over and taking control remember when we had nightmare, nightmare the other day? That, what do you oh, oh my god yeah yeah, yeah. so people, we, uh, people were like nightmare. nightmare nightmare was a nightmare yeah. <laughs> So yeah, um, are you are you cool? I talk about this. Talk about yeah. it. Okay, so um, we got invited to Nightmares. Uh, how do you even say his new album? Derm Dermverse. Oh, Dreamverse. Dreamverse. Derm Dermverse. Dermverse. Welcome to Dermverse. So Nightmares' new album, Dreamverse. He's uh, he's going on tour right now for it, and so we got invited to his show in Santa Anta. Santa Anta. It's not Santa Anta. It's Santa Ana. Um, and uh, <laughs> so we all went. And um, it was raining, uh, pouring rain, and um, I I went separate from from Nand and uh, their group, yeah, from Nand and Bryn. And I get a call like I'm like maybe twenty, maybe fifteen, twenty minutes away, and Nand's like, yeah, so we're uh, waiting right now um, because the uh, front, yeah, let you, me, you let finish me the story. So so what happened was um, we go to the line because like you know we're gonna pick up our tickets and go in. Um, there was a huge puddle in front of the uh, the will call ticket and the uh, 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 will security call check. Yeah, yeah, the security, all that. Um, and they couldn't. It was, I guess, is the danger or something. So they were waiting to literally move all the tents over so that they could give us our tickets. But before they could do that, they had to wait for the 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 line to all go in, and they so they'd be out of the way. In. So they weren't letting anyone in. And Fuck. we only found this after the fact once we got inside. So there's a building. Uh, this this entire uh, show was outside, by the way. Yeah. Um, and when we were uh, we went inside, apparently they stopped everything and had everybody who was there go inside the building and just wait for like forty minutes. Yeah. Because keep in mind, it was raining, lightning, thunder. All. I get it, yeah. the dangers, all that jazz. But this they should have prepped in the sense of like knowing what the weather was going to be for an outside festival. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I think they did, but there's only so much you can do. Weathermen don't even know what the weather's going to be. <laughs> yeah. you know? like, 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 think about it. Think about it. If they knew it was going to rain for sure, well, they could either cancel it or how they? How can they stop lightning? No, like you know? move, move yeah. it indoors. Oh, yeah. There was a lot of lightning, yeah. I remember, on the, on the drive. Yeah. Well, I mean, that that's just more money, to be honest. Yeah. Like, you're going to have to set up a full thing inside and outside. Honestly, yeah. Dude, I, I, can we talk about that venue, too, real quick? Because what that, venue? That's the Santa Ana, mm. the, the, uh, observatory, observatory Festival Grounds. Yeah. Sucked, in my opinion. <laughs> I did not like it. You didn't it like at, it? I, I, I thought, I liked the layout in terms of, like, the stage and the, the, um, the concessions were like on the side, very yeah. easily accessible. Um, that VIP uh, area was embarrassing. Um, oh yeah, it was not you. The, the VIP area was off to the left. If you were in the VIP area, you can barely even see the stage because you're so far to the side of it. Yeah, there's no point. It's to like the no area. point to even. Literally, we got there. Uh, we got there. And I remember you saying like, yeah, the VIP, like there's basically none. And I'm like, oh, okay, how bad can it be? It's a gated corner with tables. Yeah, I with walk two up. tables I walk that are up, wet. There is no one in this area. Yeah, we <laughs> tried. We tried, man. No one. Immediately we left. And Dude, we stepped in thinking, oh, this is a VIP area. And then I look around and I'm like, is this it? Can, we, can we at least go in front of the stage? <laughs> nope. Can't even go in front. In between like the speakers and like, yeah. I'm like. What's the point? And, yeah, there's exactly. No point. There's and no the point. worst, the worst part was, I mean, we're not gonna name any names, but the like the people who invited us, like they were like hyping up the VIP, mm -hmm. like it was gonna be like oh, life changing. Oh, I, I got there, I'm just like, what is this, guys? I feel like they just threw it together at the last oh, second for guys. you guys. All I know is, do not wear heels to an outdoor event because you never know what the weather is going to be like. I was the only bitch in heels at this outdoor rainy puddly events are your um, feet okay <laughs> no people were stepping on my feet do in the crowd when we got into the crowd do platforms count as heels no i'm talking about open toe heels like got it. where i feel like i feel like you shouldn't just you just shouldn't have open toed at any i thought it was a club i mean 
<laughs> that's I, actually, to be fair, to be fair, I thought it was too. We all I thought, thought it was. It was to be fair though, we did go to a club after. That's true. We did. We did go to a club after, so we had yeah. to be dressed for that too as well. But speaking of uh, shoes and toes and uh, the ground, <laughs> um, shoes, toes, and <laughs> we should maybe Great what a tra- what a transition. <laughs> we should maybe talk about. Um, uh, all the stuff that ended up on the ground at uh, Nightmare's uh, Dreamverse mm. um, you guys, you guys, Classic. You guys disappointed me so well, much that my day. My purse disappointed me that day. It opened up oh, by it's itself. Oh, the purse, yeah. It yeah, opened definitely up the by purse. itself. Yeah, yeah, well, when I'm looking at the ground and I see your phone and then, and then give it back to you and then we put a clutch loop on it and I ask you, hey, do you lose anything else? And you say yes. And then I find your keys. And then I find your your credit cards. I find all your no, stuff. No, my cards were in my phone. So that was part. That was one part. It was together. I found at yeah, least count them. <laughs> I, I found at least four different items of yours that were on the ground. Yeah. Like shout out to Devin. He had his clutch loop. I had mine attached to my phone at all times now. Yeah, but I, I can't really say that I'm above this either because my keys literally fell on the ground right after that. So. They were already on the ground, I think. Yeah, well, I, I forgot. I was actually wearing my lunchbox uh, sling pack, and I forgot that it has a little clip in it to like clip your keys on. Yeah. And I did not do that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's my fault. But um, thank I'm, you, Rave Dad, for uh, finding that. Yeah, stuff thank you, Rave Dad. You know what? I'm actually going to pat myself on the back for that because uh, since this happened to me, yeah. oh, that feeling is the worst. So You're I just like thought to myself, aware. I was so hyper aware. Yeah. I was just yeah. like, I'm just keep looking at the ground. I'm just, I just want to keep looking. Because it wasn't underneath her feet. Good man. Your keys were underneath someone else's foot to my yes. left. Yeah, your keys moved. were underneath Capriana. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Absolute rookies. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, to be fair, it's it was <laughs> it I, was horse tranquilizer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is. Uh, <laughs> so I, I don't know I don't what you're talking is. about. Yeah. All I know is can Horse we talk about workout? Yeah, that. Can we talk about how you had the clutch loop on lock? You just had an extra one on you. And like Oh no, they weren't using them. Well, he just had it and it wasn't attached to his phone either. Yeah, I'm yeah. giving you shit. Okay. Yeah, well, no, because um my my sling pack has a uh it has like a like an anti-theft pocket on the inside. So mm-hmm. I, I I just had mine in there. Uh, but I actually was planning to use the clutch loop, mm-hmm. um, but I didn't need it. And it went to someone who needed it more. Than <laughs> I did. Mm-hmm. AKA I, the most reckless person I know. We had a whole moment. That's all I know. I was like, can I, could you put the clutch loop on? And he put it on for me. He's like, really? Yeah. It was like almost like it. a movie. It was like yeah. a movie scene. It was a moment. Honestly. It was a moment. <laughs> opening the clip slowly. Oh. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, wow. And then oh, I was like, wait, where do I put anymore. it? And I was like, put it right here. Yeah. You could just you could just get a bunch of clutch loops and attach them to every single important item in your bag, right? That way yeah. you can just keep dragging. Oh. Them yeah, can I have mine back? By the way, <laughs> yeah, I don't think my, you gave it back it's to in me. It's my apartment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, keep your things close to you. And um, yeah, I oh, I was gonna comment too. I literally at Adventure Club right after. I think I found your vape on the ground behind me. Yeah, you guys were looking Eventually. for it for a second. Yeah, and I, I found it on the ground. It was the vape that you lost. Yeah, your your vape, your pink and white one. Oh, nicotine. Yeah. <laughs> when I was a nicotine addict, past tense. Well, I'm glad you recovered. Yeah, it's, been five, it's been five days. <laughs> five days. Yeah. They took it away from me at Dombreski, so I haven't had Dude, it since. If you actually so. look, if you actually look at our podcast, because I decided to go watch them the other day, she quits. <laughs> she quits vaping in every episode. Hey, but I don't have it right now. Yeah, it's yeah, cool. yeah. And then the next episode we have you, I'm like, yeah, I quit two days ago. <laughs> I might get it for escape, so I might have it. Wait, that actually makes me made me think of something that I thought of uh, earlier when uh, Jizum said that Tech House was the wave, mm-hmm. and I feel like I hear that for every genre of music. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, because no, I was literally talking with um, Val the other day because we're, we're like both super into drum and bass, uh-huh. and he was like, he was just like, I, I said, I'm like, yeah, I feel like drum and bass is really in right now, and he starts laughing. And I'm like, what? And he's just like, dude, the amount of t- like every year i hear someone say that and like <laughs> i don't ever feel like it's well so like, actually. there's actually I, my i actually have a prediction i think because it was like it was future bass then it was tech house uh-huh. next is next is gonna be jungle or garage uh-huh. yeah so oh, like, that reminds me of one of robert's uh that one jungle jungle house song that he played jungle i don't remember house song? yeah he has a jungle house track that mm-hmm. he played it uh when he was still living here mm. and it was sick all the all the like hyper pop artists that like blew up over like the, the TikToks, yeah, yeah. hundred gex yeah. or like uh, or like the Pink Panthers type stuff, mm. right? Yeah, like all that all that stuff is going to translate over to yeah. an appeal for EDM, and so producers are going to start oh. making garage and jungle. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. I used to think Troy Boy was garage, but then I it's it's fair. Learned. Like I mean, the the thing is like there's two. There's a bouncy beat, and then there's a swingy beat. Yeah. Right. So this pick your 
Pick your poison. There's also yeah. like mid tempo type <laughs> stuff, which is similar yeah. to to some of the res, mm -hmm. the mid tempo. Oh yeah, yeah. Yep. Or G house gets a little slow too sometimes. So mm. yeah, and G house is so funny. Yeah, <laughs> that I that literally should be your patented like music genre. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. no. I'm responsible no, for no an entire genre of the thing, music. <laughs> the thing is, like back back to what we were talking about earlier. Like, there's just so many options. There's so many flavors. And like, if you actually want to yeah. be a producer and you actually want to be a good producer, somebody that's like remembered for making good music, mm -hmm. you yeah. should not. I should not be able to say necessarily unless you're a pioneer of the genre. I should not be able to say, oh, you make bass house. Like you should just yeah. make music yep. and it'll sound how yeah. it sounds. And then it sounds like you. Yeah. And yeah. Not, and not like a genre. And I think Honestly, people can classify res. them. I think people can classify them however they want, but it, it should be like that. Yeah. People, yeah. people will make stuff up like mid tempo bass. Like I've yeah. never heard of that before. Res. Example. Never. Res. Yeah. Res. For the longest time, it was that's res is sound. Mm -hmm. And Porter. Mm -hmm. And Porter. That's yeah. Porter, Porter sound. Flume and Porter. Are I feel like now, sure. like you can't really depict what porter is so i just like oh it's just porter did you yeah. know did you know like i saw this the other day uh before he was porter we're talking like 2000 i don't know 12 something like like yeah. that his music was way harder yeah yeah oh yeah, way yeah. Oh, yeah. dude i watched yeah. a video that was literally because you know he actually doesn't have that many songs like like he actually this was before he came out with nurture but um before that yeah like they you could literally like count and like remember like the amount of songs that he's had total yeah um and they were going they went all the way back to like the first releases he had yeah and it's like no way that's him like Speaking no way of porter how is he able to stay so relevant after all these years because it took him like what six years for can, another I, album i can answer that yes please yeah. it's just being genuine yeah like, like there's there's so there are so many people in the EDM scene, like as DJs, that are DJs and not artists. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between those two things. Like yeah. you can also be a DJ and not be a producer, but in the term, like in, to speak to an artist, like that's that's different. And Porter is like an artist, right? Yeah, yeah. you can feel the emotion in his yeah. music. You can feel the care. Like you see multiple videos popping up of him, like letting the audience play. Yeah, yeah. Dude, that I love yeah. that. Yeah. Okay, so cute. okay. So like, I, I was gonna bring up earlier too. Like at Wakan, LS Stream walked around and like yeah. filmed yeah. people that he met, and then he put that up on his. Uh, That's I don't, so know, cool. I don't want to call it Jumbotron the L, the screen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he put that up for for people to watch because they like care about the community and they care about this art and they care about like the things that they're putting into this this culture and this yeah. world. Yeah. Like if you want to stay relevant don't make that your goal yeah and if you don't make staying relevant your goal and instead you just contribute then you will always be relevant yeah yeah he took yeah. the time to like make to make nurture and like yeah. to make I mean, yeah. i'm sure the same amount of work went into worlds you know it's mm -hmm. like well because he also had virtual cell yeah and he took, a, he took a really long he break too, such yeah. a long break but it was like kind of a break because he was still making music yeah. he was yeah. just making other types and of, now yeah. he has a house alias oh he does yeah, yeah. yeah. virtual self house, oh yeah okay yeah. house thought it was like a new one Air, oh, air, okay. air, oh, air to air, oh, air to earth. earth. Oh, he does have a new, new yeah. alias. Air yeah. to oh, earth. That's right. I saw that set at love EDC. That. I just <laughs> love, <laughs> again though, EDC I, recently. Mm -hmm. I remember that. I was like, wait, this is not sound like Porter. <laughs> yeah, because like, it's not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Air to I, earth. I, I do love like well, is, how um, yeah. how involved how involved uh, uh, like like you said artists who who are contributing and they're involved in the community. They're involved in what they do. So like every time I see an artist actually out on the field like like out there raving with us just vibing having a good time i'm like yeah they're a raver too they're and not just an artist they're a raver yeah. too. and you don't even have to do that if you go the route of like sudden death for example like you're just creating an experience mm -hmm. yeah right like you're just creating a good way to look at it yeah you're yeah. you're not necessarily like as a person because a lot of artists like have that kind of withdrawal of like i don't want to tell people like my real so i don't want to let people into my personal life especially on social media yeah um but like sudden death just crafts like this feeling this like it's basically like you're living a movie. It's like a performance exactly. too, yeah. because he has the fire act and then he has yeah. a void. So he has like different performances that people could look forward to. He's not just yeah. a DJ. Everybody and their mom can show up to those mm -hmm. decks and just press yep. the button. Yep. Yeah. My last thought on this, mm -hmm. my last thought on this, uh, laser face. <sighs> laser face is an experience. I if just, you don't know who laser face is, is it Martin Garrix? No, well, no. no, technically Laserface is a guy yeah. that um, works with Gareth Emery a lot. Gareth Emery, that's the one. Yeah. He created the entire laser show, if you, all of it. If you guys haven't seen videos, of, they're trending right now. Yeah, Looking, they are trending. Yeah, Look it up. Amazing. Yeah. Honestly, I love you, Excision. Your production's A1. 
but Gareth Emery's lasers, I think, are better. Oh, okay. right that's a you statement. Out. That is a statement. And just my, just, on the just my personal <laughs> opinion right now, like Gareth Emery's killing it. His team are laser. Oh my god! Because Even it's it's like what Grayson said experience yeah it's the experience there's yeah. a there's a guy specifically that does the laser face visuals that partners with gareth, gareth Emery. I, when i'm making music at, at my house i will put on uh laser face videos and see if it works in the in that yeah. context that's so it. i'll just just to watch it sometimes yeah. it lines up really awesome i love, you I love, that. I love, love the excision that. sorry well, have you guys so. seen btsm he makes like a cinematic experience where he even mm. calls it a cinematic experience yeah. going to church mm -hmm. going to going church to where, like he has like a whole like movie production as yeah. he plays yeah, yeah. yeah. um Hate to cut us all off, but we are actually out of time. We We're getting kicked yeah. out again. God damn. Well, kind of. Kind it's of. It's like a light kick out. We, ha we yeah. have some time, but we have to pack up all we our have to pack up. Hey, we, yeah. we just don't want to get in trouble. Again. Well, we came yeah. in 15 yeah. minutes ago acting all angry. Yeah, he came yeah. in 30 minutes before they close and to remind us that they yeah. close at six. As yeah, like, we we didn't know. like we didn't know. <laughs> listen, listen, listen real quick. The man's always going to try and keep you down, okay? Don't listen to him. <laughs> don't let him. If you're not working for your own dream, you're working for somebody else's. Email right. for yeah. their management will be in the description. Oh my God. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. But then thank you for what, six? Yes. Yeah. Thank oh, wait. you for oh, Plug yeah, yeah. yourself. Yeah, plug yourself. Everything. Tell the people what you're, what you're working on right yeah, now. Yeah, plug everything. Uh, naturally, I'm here because I make silly internet videos. <laughs> but the thing that speaks to my soul is the music that I make. So like, if you guys at all think I'm funny <laughs> or are curious at all about my story or my anything, just give my music a try. It'll do the it'll do the rest of the talking. I don't have to sell anything past that point. Just look up G Zoom on any of your favorite <laughs> fucking streaming services or whatever. Just do you have any do new it. music coming up? Do it, do it, do it. I uh, I got some pretty cool stuff in the works, and I'm starting to play a lot of sets now. If you really want to hear unreleased stuff, just come find me. But I know his address. Just ask. Go go. Check. I know his address too. <laughs> yeah, just. Oh, yeah, just, me too. Just. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Oh, I don't. Give it a chance. Alrighty, That's alrighty. all I gotta say. That's it. Thank all you right. so much for watching yes, episode thank one, six. You. Thank you. Uh, six? Oh my God. Oh, once again, thank you for watching. We're your hosts. I'm Devin. I'm Mickey. I'm Nand. I'm Brenda. And this is our wonderful guest, Grace. the race scientist, Grayson. <laughs> Bye, G-Zoom. All right. Bye. Bye, guys. Love you. Love you. Comment what you want to see. <laughs> yeah, ask us questions. <laughs>